Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Chumi. I make videos every week to add value to you as I do to myself. Now, it feels as if it's been such a long time since I actually sat down to record something because I've pre-filmed a bunch of videos. Um, and if you've been following me for some time now, you would have noticed that I have already had a baby. Uh, so Levi was born about six weeks ago on the 13th of April. I am now almost seven weeks postpartum, so Levi is almost seven weeks old at the moment. In today's video, we wanted to sit and talk to you about my labor experience. It was, I want to say it was a positive experience. It probably might be traumatizing for some of you, but what I'll do is we will share our experience and then it's up to you to judge. But whatever it may be, it is ultimately a realistic uh, labor experience. I've seen so many videos from other people just to get the gist of how it will be, you know, to understand how it will be. One of the reasons why I saw so many videos and one of the reasons why I want to make this video is because I had Levi um, in the midst of the third lockdown in UK. Because it was in April, we were in the midst of the third lockdown and the rules and regulations are so different. So it was a bit difficult to, you know, kind of um, estimate how things was going to be um, and I'm a first time mother so I had no clue whatsoever so I thought I really wanted to share this video for my own keepsake for our own keepsake basically to share our experiences and to remember and also to share our experience with you hopefully it will be helpful for you we have been trying to film this for the last two weeks yeah, yeah by group about group. two weeks and today we decided no matter what we're gonna film it so we were work. going to film it at 5 p.m. right after work but it's now half 11 at night um, and Levi is down for his nap actually his bedtime now and if you hear a white noise in the background we've got the monitor here because Levi is sleeping in the next room so yeah that's mm. that's it and that's why Lachman has coffee and if, if one of us fall asleep then you know what happened <laughs> <laughs> you know what was the reason no. right no let's get let's get let's get in the main story where do you want to start so we had Levi on the 13th of April. I woke up at 4 in the morning yeah. uh, to go to the loo as usual and then I couldn't sleep after that. One of the things that I've always been worried about is whether I will know that I'm in labor, whether I will know that I've started my contractions or not. 4.20 in the morning, 20 minutes after I went to the toilet and came back, yeah. it was so obvious. I knew I was already having contractions at that time. Yeah. So 4.20, I didn't wake up, as in I didn't get up from bed, I didn't wake Lakshman up at all. I just mm. laid there, but I reached out for my phone because I wanted to start timing it. I've got this app on my phone that you can time it. So I reached out for my phone, timed it, and then within 10 minutes, my water broke. I felt like a gush of water, just a little bit, and I knew for sure it was my water that broke and it wasn't pee. Because that's one of the things that everyone always talks about. You don't know if you're peeing yourself or if your water is broken. <laughs> But it was, it was a definite thing, you know. That's when I woke Lakshman up. About 10-15 minutes after, is that when I woke up? Yeah, that's right. I and sat up and I said my water broke. Lakshman was like so quick to get up. He got out of bed, got ready and he was like, okay, what do we do now? Who do we call? Shall we leave? Are you ready to go? I said, no, 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 calm down. We need to kind of time it and everything. So we waited for about a half an hour. Yeah, we gave it about see, half an hour. Just to make sure, you know, it is not that your pee it is actually a water. Mm. <laughs> very quickly things start escalating. Yeah, yeah, it escalated very, very quickly. We didn't expect that at all. Five o'clock, slightly past five, I called um, the clinic. So the regular protocol is that you need to call the midwife first of all. They will then speak to you over the phone. They will ask you a few questions. They will gauge whether you need to come straight away or later on. Um, because my contraction had just started and it wasn't really consistent, we thought it will be a couple of hours before we need mm. to go into the hospital. That's exactly what she told any patient or the yeah. monitor. If it gets more frequent, it's at 511, isn't it? Yeah. What is that 511 again? I've completely forgotten. I can't remember too. It's gone now. It's every five minutes. Lasting for one minute and for one hour. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. You need to have your contraction every five minutes and it should last for a minute and it should be consistent it's for an hour. Minutes. Only right. then you actually go to the hospital. Otherwise, you yeah. stay at home, and you you don't labor at home, but you stay at home, mm -hmm. and you know you wait until things have progressed right. further for you to go. Yeah. Especially because of COVID now, they don't want you to be in the hospital yeah. longer than necessary. So we gave them a call, sat in the room, calmly, 
trying to be calm. Actually, I think we were still calm, weren't we? Uh, first thing in the morning. Yeah. And then I went to wash up, as in I wanted to change and get ready um, for the day, actually, to see what was happening and everything. But the minute I stepped into the shower, yeah. my That's water wonderful. broke fully. It was like properly, properly gushed out, okay? And these are the things that I've heard people talk about in all of these maternity forums and everything, and even in movies and stuff. You know that people are like in the middle of the supermarket or somewhere yeah. out shopping and the water actually I'm, breaks and I'm, it pours out. I'm glad for you it just broke inside the toilet. In the shower, yeah, perfect. not even in bed. Imagine yeah. if it was in the bed or in the floor, it was like, yeah. okay. I would have been changing the bed sheet. So the minute I stepped into the shower, my water gushed completely, okay? And I was like, okay, this is it. Contraction wasn't regular at all. It wasn't consistent. No. It was there, but it just wasn't consistent. Because the midwife said, as soon as you felt there's a large amount of water you're losing, they yeah. asked you to give you a call, isn't it? Yeah, she told us to call. So immediately called her. I couldn't even step out from the shower because it was gushing her non-stop. So I called her from the shower. So once I got out from the shower, I went to touch up a little bit. I didn't put on makeup as such, okay? I don't normally use that much makeup at all. It's just that this was already 6 in the morning and I thought, okay, now that my water has already broken and they have asked me to come to the hospital, I thought it was going to, you know, escalate quite quickly and the baby was going to come quickly and I wanted to be ready for the day. I, I wanted I was, to look... I was panicking and you were calm and I was like very surprised, okay, yeah. this girl is quite calm. You were panicking and so was my mother. While yeah. I was getting ready, I was putting on my powder and combing my hair and blusher and eyeliner and all of those stuff. My mother was on one side and Lakshmi was on another side and both of them were looking at me as if something was wrong with me and they were like, you don't need to do all of these, you know, you need to you get to the hospital as soon as possible. And yeah. I said, I want to look nice when the baby comes. Yeah. You know what, 12 hours later when the baby actually came, I didn't look anything like I did at 6 in the morning. I'll include pictures at the end of this video to show you how I actually look like once a baby was born. And I was like, I was so ignorant about how labor was. But yeah. first time mother, this is what is expected. No matter how much people tell you, you're not going to feel it at all until you experience it. So eventually, we left home at about 6, slightly past 6 o'clock. That's when, you know, we got ready and everything. Hospital bag was in the car. I've yep. already got a video about how I packed my hospital bag and why I kept it in the car so that it's easier for you to leave. So if you want to watch that, I'll leave a link The link to is it. over here. Over there, over there, yeah, somewhere, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll leave the link somewhere, wherever it is. So we reached the assessment center about 6.15. Mm. Around uh, 6.15. And then we, well, because of the COVID, you only, only you're allowed to go and they didn't allow me in. So I had to wait outside until mm -hmm. further information from you. Yeah, um, because it's still lockdown, your partner can only come in during active labor, not mm -hmm. before. And this is only the assessment center. Yeah. That's your first step. So you have to go in and then they will check you and they will say whether you are yeah. in labor or not and how much dilated you are and mm -hmm. all of those stuff. That's why only I had to go in. And you know what I did? Do you remember what I was doing? While we were walking, Lakshman walked with me to the entrance because the car park was um, a short distance away from the entrance itself. Mm -hmm. And because I already had my contractions ongoing, on and off, it still <laughs> wasn't consistent at all. It was difficult for me to walk on my own. Okay? Like exactly, so Lachman walked with me. I actually stopped to take a couple of pictures here and there because I wanted to commemorate the entire thing, you know, I wanted to document everything. So I was taking pictures, and Lachman was so tense up. He was like, Are you serious? You actually want to take pictures now? I was still very calm. I don't know how, don't know I don't how know why. Does it. Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, I don't know it myself. Yeah. Um, so, anyway, eventually I went into the assessment center and Lachman went back yeah. to the car and he was waiting in the car. And when you went inside, calling. the midwives were saying, I mean, before they'd done the full checkup, they were like saying, okay, we're just going to monitor you and send you back home and mm. you get your full contraction, isn't it? Yeah. They actually suggested that they will be sending me back. If my contraction isn't regular, they suggested that they would either need to induce or they will send me back home mm. to try and, you know, labor at home and then come back or, yeah. Um, yeah, just stay there and induce. And if I chose to be induced in the hospital, they wouldn't have allowed you in, remember? Yeah. Um, only active labor. Otherwise, I need to be on my own. And I'm glad that didn't happen. Home. Yeah, yeah. So eventually they came to check me. When they did check, they checked the baby's heartbeat and everything and they found that the baby's heartbeat was slightly um, slower than normal. I don't know if it was the machine that was faulty or mm. if the baby's heartbeat was slower because she did think that the machine was slightly faulty probably because it yeah. didn't give her the reading that she wanted and then when she checked 
She noticed that I was 7 centimeters dilated. She was shocked and I was like, what? I was shocked seven, too when you were saying Exactly, 7 how, centimeters how dilated. How come you didn't feeling any pain at all and you were yeah. calmly like <laughs> taking pictures and walking around here and yeah. there. I think even I, the doctors were shocked also. Yeah. That you had dilated 7 centimeters. Everyone was shocked because I didn't show anything and they thought I was being so brave. I wasn't. I just didn't know. I um, One thing I need to point out is that I have zero threshold towards pain. Okay, if you so much as flick me, I will feel pain. <laughs> okay, so I didn't know how I was dilated seven yeah. centimeters and I didn't really so you feel say that, but I just don't know what to say, what yeah, she went through. Yeah, but so the minute. So you can't say you have zero threshold pain in one of these days. I don't have that excuse anymore, <laughs> do I? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it wasn't even an excuse, that's how I actually am. The way the doctor and the midwife suggested that Lakshman will need to do his COVID test straight away and I'll be wheeled across the labor room and everything. We actually thought the baby will be here in about an hour or two. Sweet. We thought we didn't have much time at all. So Lakshman started panicking. He was like, you know, rushing to do his COVID test and everything. And how long did it take long for you to do your COVID test? Uh, lateral flow test? No, it was very spontaneous actually. But maybe 15, 15 minutes, minutes 15 yeah, maybe around minutes. about 15 minutes. But yeah. even then, I think they were saying you were not uh, you were not in the delivery center suit yet. Yeah. So we are still waiting for you. I thought they were going to wheel me in, but they let me walk. <laughs> that was a very long walk from the assessment center to the central delivery suite. By the time we reached the delivery suite, so I went from the assessment center, Lakshman went from the other entrance and we met there. It was already half 10. Mm. So we settled in, Lakshman brought my suitcase in and everything, we settled in. It wasn't one of those um, delivery suites with the bathtub and stuff. I didn't want any of those at all. I wasn't um, up for any natural no. delivery and water delivery, none of those. I was like, you know what, just give me plain straightforward clinical stuff, I'm more than happy. <laughs> if something goes wrong, I want to make sure we are prepared and we are able to, the room is equipped for mm. any kind of support, you know. But the room was quite nice actually, I mean, it was, it was very calm. Yeah, there. it was the, really the calm, way really they, And it was really peaceful and very, very yeah. nice. And the lighting and everything was good, yeah. very comfortable, very clean, very spacious as yeah. well. Both the midwives were very friendly and mm. nice, very encouraging. They offered a different option to me. They said I could go into the other room yeah. with um, a because bathtub. They, they checked the record and they found it you are low risk. So they yeah. they are they yeah they proposed to you if you want to do the bathtub. They mm. said it was it would be more relaxing, but mm. we insisted we actually mm. wanted to be staying in the same in that floor. room. Yeah, I was like, you know what, I'm not but, bothered about bathtub. Thankfully, get it. thankfully we we made, we made the right decision. We actually made the right decision by staying there. So as soon as we got there. I sat on my bed. It's not really a bed. I don't even know what you call it. It's somewhat like a huge chair sort of a thing, but that's the thing that you label on, you know. I sat there and then when my contractions happened, it was still very slow. And then the midwife suggested, you know what, if you walk a little bit, it will help you. Yeah. So I started walking. Gradually the pain increased. For around about an hour or so, I was managing the pain with breathing techniques that I learned from our antenatal classes. It's one of these rectangle breathing techniques. You can search it up and you'll be able to find it. I found it quite therapeutic to actually close my eyes and focus on the breathing technique. One of the tricks that I use is that I imagine a door pane. So I breathe across the door and then I, I breathe in across the door and I breathe out downwards the door and then breathe in across and then breathe out upwards as well. You know, that's what I was doing and I could manage it that way. After about an hour and a half, I couldn't take it anymore. No. It was quite interesting that we packed so much food in our luggage but you ended up only having the isotonic trick want to live. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we packed a lot of snacks because I've seen so many videos from other people yeah. and they say, you know what, you need sugar rush, you need a lot of snacks, you need chocolates and stuff. But when you're actually in that environment, you don't even feel like eating anything, you just want to, you know, get this done very yeah. quickly. Yeah, you're just focusing on the pain, you're focusing yeah. on everything, you're focusing on your breathing techniques, thinking about the baby. I, the only thing we had was a protein bar, that's it. We bought boxes of protein bars and chocolates and sweets and everything. Nothing we took. Uh, only the isotonic and the protein bar because I couldn't think about eating. I yeah. just wasn't hungry, neither was Lakshman hungry. But you're doing great. I mean, since 12 o'clock, I know the contraction was gradually increasing, but you're like a macho woman, like, you know, mm. I can. I mean, the nurses. I declined any yeah. pain relief. The nurses are mentioning, do you want to use the gas and air and thing else? And you're like, no, 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 I'm fine. And then yeah. they were like, so impressed with you. And I was like, oh, wow, I'm very impressed with you. <laughs> a person who is zero to, you know, uh, threshold pain. Yeah. 
But yeah, okay. What happened was, I, um, as for my bug plan, I decided that I wasn't going to use epidural. I wanted to use gas and I, that was that was the plan that I had. Um, I think it was too late for me to use epidural if I wanted to because I was already 7 cm dilated. They could only yeah. administer that to you if you were less than 5 cm dilated. Mm. Um, nothing after that. So by about 12 o'clock, I couldn't take it anymore. And then I started, I took gas and I, Lakshman insisted. He was like, you know what, it's available for you. Why don't you take it? And I was like, okay, yeah. that's it. I can't do it on my own anymore. I used the gas and I. It was very helpful initially. I was very calm. You can't keep using it constantly. Yeah. You need to take um, a breath of fresh air. As in, take a breath of gas and air and then, um, you know, fresh air. You need to alternate. You can't just do that nonstop. Mm. I, I was that... alternating for about an hour, mm. I think. After that, I was like, okay, that's it. The I funny part it. is, yeah, the funny part was that you're doing great till 12. After 12, you just hugged the gas and and slept on the bed. <laughs> you just yes. couldn't take it. Yeah. I uh, lied down. Let me just explain, okay, what happened. Because all of the midwives, everyone was so surprised that I was calm until I was 7 centimeters dilated. Had no pain whatsoever. Didn't even use gas and air until 12 o'clock. And they were praising me so much, but from 12 onwards, ever since I, no, not 12, probably half 12 or 1 o'clock onwards, mm. all my pride, my dignity, everything went out the window. Yeah. So much for praising me that I had no pain whatsoever. When the pain started, but I was still like, did I lost really it. You well with the gas because that even gas and air is just, you know, it's not a very kind of a heavy steroid to stop your pain is still yeah, like that's true. something it, to place. It kind of, yeah, it kind of relieves you for that time being, you know, and it helps you a little bit. While I was on the bed with gas and I, they had to turn me around to my side. I was on my back, but they couldn't really get like a proper heartbeat for the baby. So they had to turn me to the side and then they had to uh, strap me up again, you know, to try and hear that baby's heartbeat. Mm. When they turned me to the side, it was so bad because my back was really, really painful. It was yeah. uncomfortable. And they couldn't help me get comfortable because they really needed yeah. me to be in a position where they could listen to the baby's heartbeat. By one o'clock, I had my eyes closed completely. I couldn't let go of the gas and I tube. I was like, okay, this is it. I just cannot let go and I cannot do it anymore. <laughs> I, I heard everything, I can hear everything that people are talking about, I just couldn't open my eyes and look at anyone or respond properly at all. Yeah. For that moment, it's like you cannot separate with the gas in air and yeah. you. <laughs> from then onwards, from 1 o'clock onwards. Yeah. So yeah, from 1.30 you were completely out and mm. the midwives were just monitoring to make sure that you are dilated to a centimeter before you can start. But I wasn't, push. was I? At half no. one, so, she said that I was still only 7 centimeter dilated and I was fine. so yeah. disappointed. They suggested hormone drips so that yeah. you know I didn't have to wait for too mm. long. But they had to check with the doctor but unfortunately the doctor was or the consultant was quite busy with another patient. Yeah, they were not and available so the midwife said you know what we have to keep going yeah. ourselves. And by the time 3.30 p.m. hit and they checked again it was thankfully you were 10 centimeters mm. dilated and they were really pleased because they were very glad that they didn't have to make the interference yeah, yeah. during the labor. Things get es escalated really quickly. Mm. I think by half three you were like 10 centimeters dilated and that's the time they were like time to push the, yeah. the, the main event. Yeah, they said that was a time to push but I already had the urge to push even before that because mm. of the pain and the contraction. Um, the midwife actually asked me if I've already started pushing and I didn't know, I didn't understand were, who I was already pushing. You but were already pushing. Yeah, I, I just had that urge to get rid yeah. of that pain. You because know? of so, that push only it helped to dilate to tensile. Yeah, yeah. That's how it actually feels. And people don't actually talk about all of these things at all in, the, in any mm -hmm. of their videos or any of their experiences. Yeah. So you never know until you actually go through that yourself. So from 1.30, the midwife gave me a job to make sure that you are not dehydrated. So I was like alternating between isotonic and water. Yeah. <laughs> like every each contraction. Yeah. Jimmy, take a sip and then start again. He and literally then. had to pull the tube out from my mouth <laughs> and then put the water bottle in so that I could take a sip of isotonic yeah. and then put the tube back in. I, because I was completely out, I was obviously wasn't yeah. drinking anything at all and I was dehydrated. I had to force you to, you know, mm -hmm. you to push it inside on the fluids. Yeah, but that isotonic was really helpful. Yeah. It really did give a little bit of boost every time mm -hmm. I took a sip. So when I started pushing, after about half three inches that I was ready to push now, I pushed for some time and then I thought nothing is moving, you know, I could hardly speak but yet I was able to muster up a few words here and there. So I was like, I, was, I wasn't I was speaking in complete sentences at all, first of all, because I was completely out. I had gas and I was high on gas and air. 
um, but I can still mm. hear everything. I can still mm. understand everything that's going on in the room. I just didn't have my eyes open, nor could I speak in full sentences. I only could say like one or two words, and they had to string everything together and kind of understand it themselves, you know. Yeah. So halfway through pushing, not even halfway, I think probably 10-15 minutes. I didn't know the time at all. I was like. Why is nothing moving? And I said that. I said nothing is moving. Where is the baby? What is and happening? The, and the midwife said, No, no, no. He is coming out. He is coming out. He just keep pushing, keep pushing. Yeah, they were very encouraging, though. You were pushing really hard, yeah. actually. You were really giving everything because there's one point they have to get the gas in here from you so that you fully concentrate on that. They are like, to me, you have to do it. <laughs> you, you are literally in a different world. They're like, hello. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they had to literally take it off because I was in so much pain and I wanted the gas and I so badly. I remember I was actually biting onto that tube, and even when I was talking, I was biting onto that tube and talking the same things. Yeah, I think that's that, I think that prolonged quite long. That the last bit of push prolonged quite long, probably mm -hmm. an hour or so. And I think the midwives were starting to become concerned because you are getting exhausted, mm -hmm. the baby is getting exhausted also. So it the baby's heart rate did. Drop. Not too no, badly, but was, it was slightly dropping. It was manageable, so, yeah, yeah. They were managing it, that's why yeah. they didn't really do anything much. Around about half of the midwife decided to call the doctor and the consultant. She to, called both of them at the same time, huh? The, yeah, mm -hmm. and to just assess the situation to you know what mm. to do next. And the doctor um, checked and then found out that the, the baby is bigger than your yeah. size. Levi's head much. was much bigger than me, yeah. that's why he wasn't coming up. So, even with that much pushing. So the doctor decided to do uh, another few more pushes to see, you know, if they can bring him out. Mm. And that's the time you were like, you know, literally saying, okay, why don't we just do cesarean? Just, like, just why this boy is not coming out? Can yeah, we just do a cesarean yeah. or something? I was out? so tensed up, and I was like, you know what? Just cut. Take the boy <laughs> out. Do a cesarean. Yeah. I suggested so many things. I, I said think... he's not moving. I said, you know, do a cesarean. And the midwives actually laughed at me and they said there's no other way he's coming out other than down here. Yeah. So yeah. Now what they're saying he was because they hold it down, they can't push it back up. Yeah. <laughs> they couldn't do a cesarean. Yeah. It was way too late for no. cesarean anyway. So after a few pushes, that still didn't work. And the doctor said that they were going to do an episiotomy because they had to use vacuum. They asked me if it was okay. And I was like, yes, do it, do it. By all yeah. means do it. I was already prepared for anything, you know, as long as the baby is safe, that's fine. <laughs> Um, the vacuum part is a funny part. So when the doctor put the vacuum in and tried to pull the baby out, you know what happened? I heard a pop. Everyone heard a pop. There was so much noise in the room because there were so many people. We started off with yeah. just the two of us and the two midwife, but we ended up with so many other people. Audiences there was a, all over. There was a drop dead silence for a few seconds. Yes. Pin drop silence for a few seconds because the vacuum popped away from his head. He was still too big to come out and he was stuck inside and the vacuum came outside and they didn't know what to do next. My heart stopped by the way when yeah. I heard it. It's just, my goodness. That, I yeah. could feel. I didn't have my eyes open. I couldn't see anyone but I could feel oh. it in me. The tension that was all around in that room. Yeah. Everyone was nervous about yeah. it. The consultant then stepped in, didn't That's she? Right, she yeah. stepped in to use a forceps and she asked me if it was okay for a forceps and I said yes. Yeah. By all means go ahead, as long as the boy is safe, as long as they get him out safely, I'm yeah. fine with it. Because it, it's, I think because they did that cut, because you're losing blood, they need to, you know, make very quick decision and get him out. And yeah. no, that consultant was really good. She, she was, was very, very efficient, good. wasn't British. she? Her instructions were so good. She was really it was, quick. It was very scary to you know seeing two metals going inside and you know trying to grab. Yeah. But they know what they're doing and. Oh, we forgot to mention this. Throughout my pushing and everything, I had a lot of muscle pull. I usually have cramps on my feet and yeah. muscle pull. So while I was trying to push, I had terrible cramps on my feet and my leg. Mm. None of the doctors or the consultants or I mean the midwives understood it and they didn't know how to yeah. help. But because I normally have that at home and Lakshman knows how to help me with it, so he knew how to do it. He was by my head helping me with water yeah. but because I had it on my leg, it was my right leg wasn't it? Yeah. He had to go down to my leg to help me. Because they they weren't sure what they were what what to do and I would quickly yeah. tell them um, I know what to do yeah is it okay if I can come here they were like yeah yeah carry on and the consultant was standing next to me you're doing a great job yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think at one point they actually told him they wanted him to move away when they yeah. tried to do the episiotomy and vacuum. you know when they tried to use the vacuum and the forceps they were very but apologetic. My yeah, my cramps was quite bad that he still had to help me with the cramps. He had to hold my feet up and everything. 
So there was no other choice. So he was by my feet and he saw everything. Usually, <laughs> yeah, usually the men don't see anything at all, but he's seen everything. The amount of blood you lost, the cut, the vacuum yeah. pump, the way they put the forceps into <laughs> literally everything. Yeah. So yeah, obviously That's gonna take quite some time before you know gave the trauma flush out, <laughs> out from my brain, but yeah. I don't know who it was traumatic for, for me or for him, <laughs> but yeah, looks like it was traumatic for him more than me. Yeah. So yeah, no consultant, um, she efficiently, you know, pulled Levi out. Mm -hmm. and Her instructions was, was really good. I think this is the part I think I really enjoyed out of the late work. And then you're able to withstand so much pain yeah. what you're going through. I think the main was, because when they pulled out Levi and the consultant was holding it, I, I couldn't be able to figure out what is what. <laughs> it was like, literally like a round. Yeah. And then it's like within a few seconds, it's just like a spring bang. It's just, yeah. just it's, it's sprung yeah. up, you know. <laughs> she actually told me to stop pushing while she was trying to insert the force up. And then when she was ready, she told me to push and I did. And then halfway through, she told me to stop pushing and that's when she pulled the baby out. At this point, when the baby was about to come out, they forced me to open my eyes. I still had my eyes shut tightly mm. and I didn't see anything at all. So they forced me to open my eyes and they said, see. So the consultant told me to look and I was like, I opened my eyes and I said, I can't see anything. <laughs> and I was like, where is the baby? I can't see anything. Mm. I literally said that, you know, and then she pulled the baby out and I could actually feel the baby come out. You know, you can feel him from inside to out. Yeah. And he was heavy. He was she pulled him out. Kilograms. Yeah, she pulled him out and she plopped him on my belly, on my tummy. Yeah. And he started crying straight away. He was big so, and he was heavy and he was adorable. I mean, he was covered with everything, obviously. But I think you were still parents. like awestruck that moment. You were yeah. like, you are in pain, and at the same time, you're seeing a pleasure, a joy. Yeah. And I yeah. think that joy. The overcome it's, the pain and you're like more focused on Levi you didn't mm -hmm. even realize they were doing stitches and you do, you completely forget about what yeah, they're doing there yeah. you're that's just true. more you're just more you, focused on Levi yeah that's true you completely forget about your surrounding and everything else and you're only focusing on the baby the minute the baby comes mm -hmm. out you know that's why they say you mm -hmm. actually don't feel anything which is true for that time being yeah. So after Levi was born, um, Lakshman cut his umbilical cord and then they took him away to another section. I don't remember what it is. Where the they asked me if you want to him. change your nappies and put clothes in. I was like, it's okay, you carry it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so they carried on that. on that end and I can hear everything there. But because I had a cut, I had an epistiotomy and I had a second degree tear also, they had to do quite a lot of stitches. So the doctor, the consultant had to leave and the doctor um, was doing the stitches for me. She was going to start the stitches for me and she offered two options. One was to do an epidural, which means they had to move me to another room, give me the epidural through my spine and then do the stitches so that I don't feel anything yeah. at all. And the second option was they were, they were going to do the stitches there and then so that it's you know much quicker rather than you know allowing more time for me to lose more blood. I asked if I could keep my gas and air. I asked if I could have gas and I while she was doing the stitches in that room. I said I didn't want epidural, I didn't want to go to another room, I didn't want to waste time. And they laughed, the midwife laughed of and she was like idea. <laughs> Yeah, she was like, Yeah, you can have your gas and I hoping they they, they they were hoping that you would choose that option gas and <laughs> I think so too, yeah. I think they were hoping yeah. for that. So they gave me the gas and Yeah. I had it on, I think it took about ten to fifteen minutes. I was biting onto that tube with the gas and air while they were stitching and I still felt everything. I still yeah. felt the pressure, I was screaming. <laughs> yeah. There was a lot of shouting that was going on from yeah. half one in the afternoon. That's why I said earlier on, all of my pride, my dignity, everything completely went out the and window. And I think on top of all that, after you know they'd done the stitches and, and they realized, or the doctor realized that um, one of the red ties is missing. So, what it is is that during the surgery they use cloths and, and the red ties is to kind of um, bind the cloths. Yeah, they have like a bundle. Bundle thing. Yeah. So what they do is after surgery they have to do like a um, a count to make sure that nothing has been into the body or anything like that. So when they did the count they realized the red tie was missing and they were so concerned that must that could be in Chumis. They uh, left yeah, they thought they the, left it inside, inside and stitched it up and they were like, you know what, I want to check again. We need to check again and I was like, No, please <laughs> don't please do not touch them there anymore. But unfortunately but they had, to, they had yeah. to and that was another thing. They had they but they put the whole hands inside in the yeah. searching. I had I, I could use gas and air at that time again, but it was still painful. But eventually they found it elsewhere with 
the rest of the, the rubbish. Yeah, they actually found it. They didn't leave it inside, Oof. which was a good thing. It's the last thing you relief. want. You're yeah, like, exactly. the baby, got the stage, and this is the last thing. And then thing another infection. No, <laughs> I don't want that at all. Overall, you were underestimating yourself. You know, thinking you know you can't withstand the pain. But what you went through that day <laughs> is just amazing, and it just shows you know how strong you are. But generally, how women are strong, you know, and strong-willed, I guess, is the right word. I think it comes naturally. You don't prepare for it. You don't plan for it at all. Yeah. But when the time comes, when the time calls for it, it just happens. I think yeah. that's exactly what happened with me. Also. It's just amazing how the woman body has all this. Yeah. And that's truly a miracle. The way you know, pregnancy and delivery mm. and everything happens. The, how the baby grows in you. And comes out and all of those things. But for me, I think overall, throughout the entire labor, I was very, very surprised by how calm and collected I was throughout, right from the beginning at That's four right. in the morning yeah. until evening. I could joke around, uh, even when I was high with gas and air, even when I was in so much yeah. pain. I think I even could the, still talk. Even the family were very impressed or surprised because they were seeing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I took things very lightly. Yeah. Usually, I don't do that. But because everyone's yeah, wondering is how we're going to handle the pain, and I was like, you know, after <laughs> everything is finished, this girl just handled the pain like a breeze. Yeah. <laughs> Another thing that surprised me is that I didn't cry out of pain at all mm. throughout labor, yeah. isn't it? I don't yeah. remember. I was screaming and shouting. That's it for sure. Yeah. Uh, at the end of everything, I did apologize to everyone. I I really <laughs> hope I didn't scare off anyone else outside mm. the room. No, who was haven't. waiting for the other turn but still yeah. um yeah that that was a very strange experience for me to be able to take everything casually you know to be yeah. so light-hearted about the pain about and the suppose, labor yeah and also you know there's always that supernatural strength you know churches are praying for you during the mm -hmm. time the parents are the families a lot of people are praying for you the labor was my mm -hmm. biggest fear throughout the pregnancy and we were praying for a painless Pain delivery yeah. in a way you can say it was painless yeah. because I was dilated up to 7 cm without even knowing, without going through any of the pain. Even when I experienced so much pain during contraction mm. and you know during active labor and everything, it was so much more manageable. I thought I was just going to give up. I thought that's it, that's the end of yeah. it, but I didn't. And ultimately it's not me. It's um, by God's grace, it's the Holy Spirit and obviously yeah. all of the prayers and everything. Uh, that helped, that worked. After all of the stitches and you know the baby was ready and everything, they left us in the room for a couple of hours on our own and the nurses kept coming in and out. Not nurses, the midwives kept coming in and out. They gave me antibiotics, they gave me paracetamol because of force at delivery. Uh, they kept checking on us and all of those protocols and everything was done. Um, at the end of the night, Lakshman had to return and I went to the ward because of COVID again. Uh, your partners can't stay with you overnight, yeah. you know. So that was an experience on its own. Um, I was terrified. I have no experience carrying a newborn baby on my own. Someone literally needs to give me the baby. When I have the baby with me, I'm like a statue. I cannot move. I cannot give the baby away. I cannot turn him. I cannot do anything at all. So I was terrified when I had to carry this baby myself and I was left all alone throughout the night and throughout the next day in the hospital. Um, but that, that's an entirely different story. I suppose, time. yeah, that's where the mother instinct comes, kicks in, isn't it? Yeah, you say true. you don't know, but you eventually found out, learned, and mm. you know, the, the things that helps in places in yeah. and comforts in. Yeah, maternal instincts are very, very true and it kicks in yeah. immediately. Yeah, it's like a life or death matter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that was my experience with labor in the UK during yeah. a pandemic, during lockdown. It was, like I said at the beginning, it was a positive experience. It is a realistic experience, whether it's traumatic, positive, negative, whatever you, mm -hmm. you know, um, assume it to be, it was a realistic one. That's how it actually is. And people yeah. don't really talk about these things and you don't yeah. really anticipate any of these things at all. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you found this useful more than anything at all. Moving forward with regards to this channel, I have had pre-recorded videos all the way from April up till now and I do have a couple more pre-recorded videos for the next couple of weeks so you will the next video you see will probably be something I don't remember which one I have scheduled up but yeah I will be pregnant in the next one while I'm not pregnant now anymore but it's gonna be a mix of those kind of things I'm moving forward with any of my future videos it will be lifestyle obviously it will be something that 
I had learned, which I found really useful and which I think might be useful for you as well. So I will share those kind of things. If you have any requests, anything that you want to know, by all means let me know and I will try and make that video. Be sure to subscribe so that you're notified of my future videos as well. If there's anything else that you're interested in pregnancy, I have a playlist of it. Um, so you can go and watch that also. Yeah, don't forget to subscribe. See you again next week. Bye. Bye.